Welcome back, everyone, to another episode of Pints and Paints. Uh, I am your channel host, Jason, and uh, cheers. Here's to all your hobbying adventures this weekend. Today's beverage of choice is the Canadian Rye and Coke. That is rye whiskey. Uh, it is absolutely fantastic. I love it. It is my favorite, bar none. Uh, I should have called this Whiskey and Paints by uh, keeping all things equal, but uh, Pints and Paints had a nicer ring to it. But uh, rye is my, my first and true love. <laughs> I do enjoy it. So cheers. Hope everyone is having a terrific weekend and getting lots of hobbying in. I unfortunately have had to work this weekend, so I have not been getting as much done as I wanted. Uh, nor actually, in fact, have I got anything done. <laughs> Worked pretty late last night and then got uh, got back at it again this morning. So I'm down in the forge tonight getting an episode filmed. Got some things to respond to, some stuff to talk about, touch on. A um, little bit of banter with uh, Mr. Damien from the GBHL. Uh, thank you for chiming in on the video last week. Uh, I'm going to try and keep that going. It's kind of nice to have a little bit of uh, banter back and forth and give me something to actually talk about. So... Um, in that video, we were discussing the Thranduil model, so I have mine sitting over here. I'm not quite at the point where I want to be showing anything yet, <laughs> but uh, I will definitely do that, Damien, rest assured. But uh, lovely model, terrific, uh, as with any of the Forge World stuff, just spot on. Um, but uh, Damien asked whether or not uh, the Mirkwood Elves would interest me, and whether or not the price point... Um, that GW has put them at would entice me to get some. Uh, that's a tough one for me. I've actually recently committed to not uh, try to purchase anything until I get everything I have painted, which sounds like an insurmountable uh, task. However, um, you know, at the very least, I want to make a dent and get get a good portion of things done before I start another army. So, what I will say to that, with a caveat, is. Obviously, Christmas is coming up. I have no idea what's going to happen. Um, you know, they may or may not be on the list. I I've got to be entirely honest. I'm not a, a big elf guy. Just not. I'm a dwarf. That's that's. I'm a dwarf player. That's that's just the the style I am. Um, you know, the Thranduil model obviously uh, helps to uh, entice you towards that that uh, faction or army, no doubt. And I certainly would not. Uh, would not lament receiving any let's put it that way but uh, until my iron hill dwarves are finished i will not be purchasing any further um hobbit lord of the rings range models uh particularly those that are not of a dwarvish background i guess would be the best way to put that so um but no definitely i think the price point is uh is spot on i think it's great uh just excited to see you know what what they're gonna do with the range uh, going forward with the re-releases and stuff so it, it's a terrible time for me to say I'm not gonna buy anything and I know that I'm gonna likely crack after Christmas that that's gonna that's gonna be smashed but um, sort of my hobby goal uh, prior to Christmas slash Christmas ish is going to be to have my Iron Hills Dwarves arm Dwarf Army completely finished and done um, so if I can achieve that, then quite possibly maybe I can flesh out some Mirkwood and I can do an allied list, pardon me, um, which would be pretty cool. Not sure if I'd flush out an entire Mirkwood army, uh, but uh, definitely, definitely look into getting some of the models, I guess would be the best way to put that. Uh, interested to see some of the uh, progress that you're having on your model. Uh, for sure, for those of you who aren't following along, Damien is uh, painting his Thranduil model on the, at least last video, I believe it was the Two Time Zones episode. Uh, he was working on him then, so looking forward to seeing how that sort of pans out. But uh, on a more serious note, I wanted to take a minute and talk about something that has been causing, uh, what's the word, a fair amount of strife within the community. Um, recently, for those of you who don't know, uh, GW has uh, released an FAQ um, or compiled all of the FAQs into uh, an accessible page on the um, 
Warhammer community site, so check that out. Four pages of epic goodness. Um, you know, lots of goodies on there, lots of things to uh, read and catch up on. If you're a new player, I highly recommend you pop on over to that uh, and take a look. It's on the uh, OHA site, OSBGL, GBHL. They all have links posted up for Warhammer community. Uh, and then there's a drop down that you select, you know, whether it's Warhammer 40k, um, so on and so forth, over to the Hobbit. Um, and then all of the FAQs are listed out. Uh, very handy to have, no doubt. Downloaded them myself, uh, all the PDFs. So um, good, good things to have without a doubt. But now to the most pressing matter, and that is the amount of. What is the word I want to use? Belly aching. That's uh, that's that's the word I'm going to choose to use. Uh, I think it's politically correct enough. I'm not going to offend too many people. I'd love to use a uh, a different word, but I'm not going to. But the amount of belly aching that has been going on about this blasted Dale banner is ridiculous. It's absolutely ridiculous. So what I wanted to do on PMP today. I'm going to post up a few still photographs of both real problems, something that you should legitimately complain about, as well as some pictures of why Dale is pretty cool, and basically talk about why you shouldn't be belly aching about Dale not having a banner. If that is the worst thing that is happening in your life, that Dale does not have a bloody banner, my God, you are doing terrific. Um, it's amazing to me the amount of, uh, I'm going to say bullshit <laughs> that has been going on on the Facebook groups about Dale and a banner. Um, never have I seen such, uh, trivial nonsense causing such a ruckus. So I'm going to pause the video here. I'm going to throw in some photographs of what a real problem is, as well as some stills of Dale and the miniatures of Dale and why they're so bloody cool and then we'll get back to the video so just take a quick minute watch this next section Yeah. Yeah. I know. I know. Not much to say after that, is there? No, sir. I'm not even going to touch on the problems. Self explanatory. You guys can't figure that out. You shouldn't be watching the channel. But, Dale, the miniatures right at the end there. Come on. Nobody has as cool a hat as Dale. Nobody. Nobody in the game has a hat like Dale. Minus Biffer. I'll give him that. I'll give him that. He's got a pretty sweet hat. But Dale, I mean, those guys. Even even Gideon. He is so tired of listening to the banner bullshit that he's he's washing his hands of it. He's wiping his forehead of the crap and saying, that's it. I'm done. All this bullshit about banners. I've had enough. I can't take anymore. So, let's make this the nail in the coffin. Drop the banner thing. For the love of God when they are ready to fix it. If they ever decide to fix it, they will fix it. No amount of griping and belly aching from this community is going to affect the banner situation in Dale. Nor for that matter, might I say, nor for that matter, will a banner make that much of a difference in a game at any level that you need to be complaining about the fact that they don't have a banner if you're gonna play a friendly game and you choose to make a banner good for you kudos to you great skill great great forethought 
have at it. Enjoy it. The fact that GW and the, the Middle Earth SBG team has not created or remedied or whatever you want to call it, has not addressed the banner situation, is no longer worth the griping. It's not. It's over. Done. Finished. Move on with your life. Charge your smartphone. Make sure you got it when you go to poop. You're going to be just fine. Okay? That's all I'm going to say about that. That's it. That's the end of that segment. I'm not going to talk about it again. I certainly hope I did not offend anybody. The opinions issued here are my own. Do not represent any of the opinions of the OHA. And uh, that is my position on the Dale Banner situation. Do they use situation too many times in a sentence? Perhaps. But I don't care. So cheers. Here's the Dale not having a goddamn banner. Cheers. Uh, so... What else is going on in the OHA? Uh, George just had another game night uh, this past Friday evening in London. Uh, he had uh, Tyler as well as Dane, who was a new player that we picked up in the uh, scouring tournament. Um, so these guys from London have ramped up. They've been collecting miniatures. They've been painting. They've been reading books. We've got another fellow who's who's jumping in with an Isengard army. Uh, I believe there's a contingent of them heading to the event December 2nd in Niagara Falls, uh, and that will be Fight to the Falls, hosted by, by Taylor since that, uh, an OSBGL tournament, um, so you can go check that out on the OSBGL site, but some of those new players, it sounds like, are going to be attending that, so that's positive for sure, so all in all, things are looking, uh, looking great for the community locally. In southwestern Ontario, numbers are flushing out. Um, pause. Uh, George, OHA George will be paying me a visit down here in beautiful Chatham. Uh, he's going to be coming down Monday night, and we're hoping to get a bat rep in. Uh, we did post a request for input on the bat rep, and uh, once again, Damien was kind enough to chime in. So we are going to be doing a uh, desolation-themed board with 700 points of Iron Hills versus 700 points of Gundabad. Uh, and we're going to be duking it out uh, Monday night for that. So if that interests you, stay tuned. It'll be up late Monday night, maybe uh, early Tuesday. Um, that's in Canadian time zones. Uh, as for you Brits, you just have to be patient and wait for it to show up. That's how it goes. But uh, that is the plan. So I'm actually going to be taking a minute here. I'm going to be setting up the tables and getting the tables set up. And uh, I may do a sort of walkthrough on that later on post it up on the channel and uh, show you guys the table we're going to be playing on. Uh, to be good, I haven't been playing for a few weeks now, just with everything that's been going on, so I'm excited to see George and, and throw some dice and, and have some fun. So, that is sort of what is on the docket for hobbying in the next few days. Uh, other than that, it's going to be some more work on the Iron Hills. Um, get those guys painted out. Hopefully when George is down, we're going to have some discussion with regards to hot lead and what the plan is going to be there with the three potential days that we have um, for the event. So I definitely want to get something finalized and, uh, you know, put out to you guys for sure, uh, you know, as far as who, what, where, when, why, how, uh, all that, all that fun stuff. So uh, looking forward to it, really getting excited about hot lead, looking forward to what's going on. Uh, you know, there's a lot going on in the hobby uh, you know in general whether it's SBG whether it's it's other things um, you know the whole wargaming industry is really uh, you know I think it's really hitting its stride I think would be the best way to put it um, you know and this is this is not me trying to veer off of SBG but in all things hobby related um, you know I think I think it's really starting to hit what I would deem the mainstream uh, and it's definitely starting to take off, which is which is positive for everybody, positive for us. I know in the UK and Europe, it's it's much different because it is it is so much larger there. Uh, but even here, um, the the hold, and I think it has to do with a, a you know a shift in the in the generations. Um, you know, people who grew up with Star Wars, Lord of the Rings, uh, The Hobbit, um, you know, stuff like that. They want to find things that they can. You know, immerse themselves in those worlds. Um, even Warhammer 40k, Necromunda. I'm a huge fan of Necromunda. So pumped, and excited to see what goes on with that. 
but all of those sort of the, the nostalgic uh, you know bringing your childhood back into uh, perspective I guess and uh, you know reliving your your childhood essentially you know playing playing games that you grew up playing uh, seeing companies re-release them and focus on them uh, taking genres like the Lord of the Rings Star Wars and you know giving you a tabletop world to create and immerse yourself in um, I think it lends itself well to you know the whole um, the whole feeling so I, I couldn't be happier to see the direction of the hobby in general uh, you know SBG aside as much as that's a huge component for me just in general the hobby is is really I think taking off and doing well um, you know you're seeing a lot of board games you know fantasy flight games in particular really merging the world of board games and miniatures together which is awesome um, you know that's gonna lead to some definite crossover I'm sure which is is all going to be good things for the hobby and for SBG. You know, there's going to be an awful lot of people, especially now with the announcement of the TV show, be it good or bad, whatever direction they take, it is going to create an influx of interest in Lord of the Rings, uh, in you know Tolkien's world, which could create an even bigger boon for this hobby specifically. So, all terrific things. Pumped about where it's going. Can't wait to see what happens, and uh, you know we're just going to keep trucking along. So. Hope you guys are enjoying the content. We're going to be trying to keep more bat reps coming. Pardon me. I know George is working on his terrain. Oh, it's the Coke, man. Coke gets me every time. Gives me the burps just like the beers. Anyways, George is working really hard on his uh, sort of terrain segment. So hoping to see some traction on that. Uh, Tyler, Dane, all those guys are keen and jumping in. So... Hopefully we can really see an evolution in the content of the OS, or sorry, not OSBGL, OHA. Uh, OSBGL, they've got their own content, no things to deal with. Good on you. On the OHA side, it's nice to see sort of a uh, uh, an evolution in the content, in who's creating the content, and getting to some new and fresh input on the channel and uh, on the page. So look forward to that i hope you've enjoyed the uh, episode of pints and paints damien all the best to everybody else cheers happy hobbying and we will catch up with you next week thanks guys <laughs>